<clears throat> Hello, everyone. Welcome to this month's business first Wednesday small business financial statements. I'm Melissa from the Business Insight Center at the Central Library of Rochester, Monroe County. I want to thank you all for joining us today. Um, please remember to mute your microphones and enter any questions into the chat. Um, this presentation is being recorded and will be uploaded to YouTube. And if you registered for the event, you will receive an email with the presentation slides. Um, and I'd like to now introduce you to Christine from the Small Business Development Center. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Um, I just want to say a little bit about the SBDC before we get started here with Melissa today. So I am a certified business advisor with SUNY Brockport Small Business Development Center, known as SBDC. And our center provides the free and confidential business counseling to startups, entrepreneurs, and small business owners. And our free services are made possible by funding from the SBA in the state of New York and our host campus, SUNY Brockport. So we schedule appointments in person, virtually, or by phone. And along with our advisement, we offer virtual and in-person fast track to business ownership classes, which Melissa um, teaches the finance part. Um, and you can also register online at www.sbdcbrockport.org for our services. And please make sure to follow us on Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook so you don't miss any of our great events like this one here today. So I want to do a little introduction to my former colleague, Melissa Jordan. So Melissa Jordan serves as the Vice President and Business Banking Relationship Manager at m and Bank. Melissa partners with Rochester Downtown, Waring, and Top Supper Falls branches, bringing financial solutions to local organization and businesses. Melissa joined m and Bank in 2004 as a commercial branch manager for the Lata Long Pond branch. And in 2020, she became the commercial branch manager for Rochester Downtown and then joined business banking in 2021 as a relationship manager. So Melissa is also a co-founder and past co-president of the m and Bank Rochester Women's Leadership Network Resource Group and a member of the m and Bank Rochester This Time Will Be Different m and Committee. Melissa is passionate about helping women and minority-owned businesses in our community. Outside of the bank, Melissa is past president and fellowship chair for the Greece Rotary Club, and she is active in the community supporting MWBE. Melissa was recognized for outstanding dedication to the Greece community and small businesses by receiving the award for 2016 Business Person of the Year for the Greece Regional Chamber as well. And Melissa is also a Rotary Paul Harris Fellow. So Melissa is very accomplished and very knowledgeable in this field. So Melissa, take it away. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate you having me and uh, Melissa Cabo for having me on uh, these Business First Wednesdays. <clears throat> I think all the things that you just said, Chris, make me sound very old, but <laughs> um, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, like Chris said, my name is Melissa Jordan with Business Banking at m and I've been here 20 years uh, supporting small businesses in the Rochester community. Um, I work a lot with a lot of different sized uh, companies and organizations to create a package that is customized to meet their financial goals. I am also very intentional and proactive in creating um, an ecosystem, um, like a community connector to help you uh, start, sustain, and grow your business. So today we're going to talk about cash, credit, and finance. Wow, that's going to be fun, right? Everybody got their cup of coffee? Okay. Um, <clears throat> feel free to stop me as if you have any questions. I mean, there will be questions at the end, but, you know, if there's anything you want some clarity on, you know, I'll pause after the different slides for you to ask that. So just going over what we're going to talk about, uh, financial statement reporting, uh, the key reports would be like income statements, balance sheets, statement of cash flow, what is ATP, ability to pay, EBITDA, which is uh, earnings uh, before interest, taxes, and am amortization, and uh, debt service coverage ratios. I know that's probably like another language, maybe just some, but we're gonna we're gonna cover it. Um, what is the difference between personal and business credit scores? <clears throat> the six C's of credit and why it's important. Who is your team of professionals and some resources? So with that, I'm gonna get started. <clears throat> so um, typical financial statement reporting. Um, 
the, these are reports that the bank is going to ask you, and I'll be speaking from a bank's perspective. Um, you know, there's lots of different types of lending sources out there, <clears throat> but what I'm speaking from is from a bank when I talk today. So I just want to clarify that, but um, who knows the importance of these financial statements? Like what, why are financial statements important? And Chris, if, if you want to monitor the chat, that would be great just because I have so many screens up in front of me right now. I don't want to mess anything up. Got Anyone, why, why financial statements are important? What does it show a bank maybe? So we yeah. have um, yeah. taxes, okay. Um, yeah. Loans and lines of credit um, to assess yeah. credit worthiness. Yeah, those are all good responses. Um, you know, basically, we look at these reports to say, how does this company make money? Uh, what is this company worth? Uh, shows the financial health uh, sustainability of the organization. Um, so, you know, banks will ask for these types of documents. Um, then also, we might ask for multiple years or trends, <clears throat> year over year reports um, to to get some you know, past performance usually indicates future performance to some degree. So, um, so yes, all of those were correct answers. Um, so my mouse is very sensitive today. So what is an income statement? <laughs> and again, feel free to put it in the chat. Um, and then why is it important? I mean, an income statement is a summary of all the business's revenues and expenses over a period of time. Um, you might also have heard the income statement called a profit and loss. But um, so, you know, what are some of the things that you see in an income statement, some of the categories? And if this is new for some of you and you're just getting started, I mean, this is going to be just some basics we're going over. And trust me, you'll get familiar with it over time. Any comments in the chat, Chris, on the categories and what's broken out in them? No, nothing right now. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to tell you. Yep. Lisa, thank you. You're good. <laughs> revenue. Uh, so revenue, this re represents really all the sales operations, all the monies that you receive <clears throat> in miscellaneous income into the business. Um, then you have your expenses, and those are broken out really in two categories. Cost of goods sold, otherwise known as COGS. Um, so this will list uh, variable expenses, expenses directly related to your inventory, um, if you're a service company, you might not have COGS, um, but uh, for fo folks that have products, you, you know, you'll, you'll have the cost of goods sold. It also will show operating expenses. So these would be more like your fixed or variable expenses, um, your administrative costs, your salaries, your rents, uh, maintenance, repairs. So th that would show those types of expenses. And then as we go down, um, into the profits. So this is, you know, <clears throat> hopefully a profit, not a loss, but these are determined from subtracting the revenue minus the expenses to give us our profits. So um, just some things in the way a bank would look at this is, you know, we want to look at trends. So is revenue increasing or decreasing? Um, what is the projected revenue and why? You know, why behind the what? Um, gross profit and net profit, we would want to look at those. Um, how well is the business managing their expenses? Are the owners taking distributions? Um, you know, is money leaving the business or more money leaving the business than going into the business? Um, so, you know, those are different things that we look at in trends like year over year, month over month. Um, and any fluctuations that are significant going up or down, we just want you to tell the story to us so that we can explain it to an underwriter. Um, the story behind the numbers, because there always is a story behind the numbers. Any questions on that before I go into a sample one? Looks like no questions at this time, Melissa. Thanks, Chris. So the income statement, this is a basic um, sample statement. So <clears throat> you have your revenues up here. So these were all be, this would be all the sources of, of income coming into the business. You have your cost of goods sold. So the cost of, um, associated with producing <clears throat> the product that you offer. And then the gross profit, if you subtract those out, would be 40,000. And then we look at expenses. So 
<clears throat> like we talked about just a second ago, you have your maybe marketing and advertising, general administrative, other operating expenses. And these are pretty general categories. Sometimes you'll have the detail broken out, what makes that up under each of these. But so this is a very basic, simple uh, income statement that I'm showing you. So we have the total operating expenses um, to be 30,000. <clears> so if we take the gross profit minus the expenses, we have operating income of $10,000. Um, <clears> then we look at net interest income. So this could be income that you earn from um, CDs, uh, a savings account, you know, we add that in. Um, then you have your interest expense, uh, which could be taken from, you know, loans, um, taxes, uh, you know, and then you have your income taxes that come up. So if you were to then um, sub add that in and subtract those out, you have $8,000 in net income. Okay, so Chris, I'll just assume you're going to stop me if there's any questions. I will, yes. Oh, wait a minute. We have okay. a question. Um, from sure. Lisa, if I were to compare three past years, which figures tell the most about my sustainability and growth? They really all do. Um, hold that question. Um, and Chris, remind me if I forget, like as we go on, because all of these statements kind of work together. So we look at all of them year over year for any buckets that are going to go up or down. <clears throat> Did your expenses go up? <clears throat> why or why not? Did the cost of producing the product go up or down? Why or why not? Could be the economy, supply and demand. Um, you know, it is costing more to produce a lot of products these days. Um, you know, interest is people are earning interest on savings accounts and things like that, but <clears throat> they're also paying interest on different loans. So, you know, it depends a lot on a lot of things, your industry, the economy, um, your business at that point in time, is it seasonal? There, there's a lot of different things that we look at with that. So more. Melissa, to come. Yeah, we have one more question from William. Sure. Why isn't cost of goods considered an, an expense? Um, it, well, that's a good question. It's just the cost of producing the product. So it, it gives you like your gross profit, your margin, how much you're actually making on that product. Um, but that's a great question. Um, it's, it's just showing you these are your revenues, the money you're taking in, but it costs you this much to produce that product. So you really only have this much in profit. And it gets into profit margins too and ratios, which we'll talk about also a little bit. And, and William has another question to follow up with that. Why isn't other income considered an operating expense? Other income. So if you have multiple revenue streams, <clears throat> you might put it in as, um, you know, maybe you have revenue from services for a product that you maintain. Uh, maybe you have revenue coming in from a product that you sell. Um, and then there's there's always an other category that people can put money in. That's a, that's a great accounting question for your CPA. <clears throat> I'm a detailed person and I like specifics, but so miscellaneous and other, I usually like to see more specifics on those myself. But, you know, there seems to always be those buckets in there. So... Um, so this here is, um, EBITDA, earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. So in the example that we just looked at, <clears throat> we had net income of, oh, and over here is where that example was, but we had net income of 8,000. Now, I also want to point out, we use the net income not on the first page of your tax returns. We use the M1, which I believe is on the second or third page of your taxes. That's like your book value net income. So that net income, and this is a quick ability to pay that most banks use to see how much debt the business can afford. Um, so we look at, we take the net income, we add back in any interest expense from loans and things. <laughs> we add back in the taxes, we would add back in depreciation and amortization. <clears throat> and that's not in this example, but if there was, it would be added back in to get the earnings. This is like the money that we have to play with. So we have $11,000 in funds to cover any debt. Now for this example, 
we're assuming the business has no other debt, but maybe this loan they're looking to apply for. So um, say the loan payment is 500 a month or 6,000 a year. Okay. Cause we annualize everything. <clears throat> we take the 11,000 divided by the $6,000 potential loan payment. <clears throat> and we get 1.83. The goal is to be at least 1.2. But what that tells a bank is it's a ratio that for every dollar in debt this business has, it has a dollar and 83 cents to support the debt. So the 83 cents is like a buffer. The goal is to be at least 1.2. Um, but this is just a quick ability to pay. Now, if you had other debt on your balance sheet, and we would have to put that in here also <coughs> to... Um, and I have a model that I usually show my customers when they're applying for a loan <clears throat> to kind of go over and show, you know, how they can tell how much they can afford to take on for their business comfortably. You know, you, you still have to, to eat and turn the lights on and all that good stuff. So um, this is a quick um, ability to pay model that most people use to calculate what a company can afford. And these numbers get pulled off of, you know, if you have audited financial statements, they're pulled off of there. They're pulled off between your income statement and your balance sheet. They're pulled off of um, <coughs> tax returns. So, you know, all of these reports together, this is how we calculate this. But your banker should be able to go through this with you and uh, explain it. Any questions? This is a really basic Next. example. Yeah, it looks like we're good, Melissa. Okay. So the balance sheet, what is the balance sheet? Anyone? I love the balance sheet. It's probably one of my favorite ones. Most bankers like balance sheets. It's a snapshot in time and it changes every day. So it's comprised of um, your assets and your liabilities and owner's equity. And the balance sheet must balance. So basic accounting fundamentals, assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. So what is an asset? You know, an asset is your cash. It could be marketable securities. It could be real estate, automobiles, um, <clears throat> retirement accounts, things of value. Um, your liabilities on this side would be like credit cards, auto loans, mortgages, and then the difference between assets and liabilities is your owner's equity. And we are going to then go into an example of a balance sheet. <clears throat> so the balance sheet, let me uh, dig in here a little bit. Is this familiar? Hopefully to some you've seen one. <clears throat> Again, it's a snapshot, a point in time. I like to see this month over month or year over year to look at trends um, to see how you're doing. So a current asset. You have current assets and you have um, non-current assets or longer term assets. Sometimes it's called. So current assets and there is an order. There's a method to this madness. They go in the order of liquidity. So how quickly you can turn these items into cash is a current asset. So and, and that would be usually less than 12 months. So typically it's converted into cash. Any of these current assets in 12 months or less. So um, you have your inventory, <clears throat> your accounts receivable. Those can usually, those are the most common ones. They can be turned into cash pretty quickly um, if needed. Um, and then you have your fixed assets that you might have. Um, and these would take longer than 12 months to convert typically. Same holds true for liabilities. You have current liabilities and you have non-current or long-term liabilities. So what this is showing here is these are items that are due within less than 12 months. And the long term is things, items, liabilities, debts that are um, due greater than 12 months. So what I look at on here, again, is if I'm going to be doing the ability to pay model that I just showed you earlier, I'm going to want to look at your current debts to make sure they're truly current debts. You know, is it something I need to put on my ability to pay? And then for non-current liabilities, your long term or I might ask you for a debt schedule. It shows the debt you have for your company, the amount, when it matures, and the rate that you're paying. So those all have to be added in as debt on top of the current debt that you're requesting to make sure that you can pay it back. 
Banks love to do loans. We just want to see that you can pay it back with cash from operations. Um, so also I might look at that. And when you give me your debt schedule, we might be able to offer you something that will increase your cash flow. Maybe we can consolidate some of those items, uh, refinance some of it that can increase your cash. Every situation is different. No two are really alike. Um, so it's really looked at as a one-off, but that's something that we consider. Um, and then the owner's equity, you know, this is sources of cash not der derived from uh, liabilities. So again, the balance sheet must balance total assets, 38, and then total liability and owner's equity, 38,000. Again, this is a real basic uh, balance sheet. Okay. Um, so now we're going to look at the statement of cash flow. Um, so the statement of cash flow, <clears throat> this is another report that you can pull from your QuickBooks, just like you can the, the profit and loss or income statement in your balance sheet. But what this really says is the money that's coming into your business and it's going out. And it represents your operating activities, your operating cycle. Um, so <clears throat> that's one thing I look at. So I say, tell me how money comes into your business. How do you accept money? Who do you accept money from? What is the revenue and cash that's coming in? And then we look to see, does this company generate a positive cash flow <clears throat> from its operations? Uh, why or why not? Is the company generating or consuming more cash? So that that's a big thing to look at because you don't want to have, you know, cash crunch issues and, you know, then maybe you need some working capital. And then we look at, is there any trends or cash of, on the cash flow over a period of time? Maybe you're a seasonal business. Um, other buzzwords that you might hear bankers talk about is sources and uses. <clears throat> so this is sources and uses of cash by your company. So a sale of an asset like inventory, um, uh, receivables that you receive in uh, from customers, uh, maybe you sell a building, maybe you see a, sell a vehicle, any sale of an asset produces a source of cash, okay? And then repayment of debt, so uses of cash, that, that is um, another way that it affects how money's coming in and out. Okay. Uh, I think I, there we go. So what is a credit score? We, we're kind of done now with the reports. So before I get into credit, did anybody have any questions on the reports? I would be happy to meet with anybody one-on-one -on -one to go over your reports and you know, give you some questions that you should ask yourself maybe every month on those reports, what to look at. Um, hopefully your accountant, CPA or bookkeeper or somebody is sitting down with you and, and going over those regularly. You should be pulling those reports that I just talked about monthly. Um, but I'd be happy to sit down with anybody. My contact information will be in here and Chris actually has it. She can put it in the chat, but happy to talk with anybody one-on-one -on -one about your particular situation or to help you review your reports. Oh, and before I'd be remiss. Favorite book ever. Whoops, my screen here. Can you guys see this? Is it showing, Chris? I can see it now. <clears throat> my favorite book ever. It's, you know, financial reports sometimes can be kind of dry to read. <laughs> I find this book is fun. And actually, you're going to pick it up again and again. <clears throat> I rented it from the library uh, one time and I loved it so much. And I, I you know, bought it. So I worked. I request it to everybody. So strongly suggest this. If you're new to financials and just getting started, that's okay. This book will help you out tremendously. And it will give you ratios and percentages that benchmark you and where you should be at, at the different categories. So back to Lisa and William's questions, I think it's going to answer a lot of the things that you might be thinking of. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So credit scores, credit is huge, especially when you're just starting out. Well, it really is anytime, but because you might not have built up business credit, your personal credit is very important because what it tells us is, um, it tells us your past payment history. It tells us how, you know, maybe your relationship somewhat with money. Now credit scores, you know, realizing life happens, you might have a great credit score today and life happens and maybe it takes a dip and you're trying to get it back on track. I understand that happens. Um, maybe you, you don't have really a, a credit score because you're just building your credit. You pay cash for everything. And you never had any credit. So 
understanding all of that. But, um, you know, we we really look to, you know, hopefully you have your your score maybe in the, this range. <clears throat> um, if you're in this range, there's some best practices to get you up into this range. Um, there is lots of resources out there. I'm going to recommend that you meet with the Consumer Credit Counseling Center. Um, they have a lot of resources and uh, folks that can help you. And Chris maybe can put their information in the chat. There's also a website. And uh, Chris, maybe in the chat, this one, consumer dot F is in Frank, T is in Tom, C is in cat dot gov. There's some um, good reports. My screen's messing up here, but there's some good reports that you can pull on how to repair and build credit and also where you can pull your credit report to review it. Because before you come to um, your banker looking for money, you should have a good idea of what your credit is. Um, the one thing I would hate to do is if you're, you know, really close to <clears throat> getting that score up and we pull credit and it, and it pulls your score down, um, you know, because I, I don't want to do that if it's going to hurt you. I want to make sure you're ready, um, you know, to apply for the loan. And if you're not, I want to help you get there. So just applying isn't always the best thing. I like to have a conversation about that. Um, so ways you can improve your score, though would be to, first of all, pull the report um, and then pay your bills on time. Decrease your credit utilization ratio. Um, and so any revolving lines that you have, you want those balances to be below 30% utilization. That's a pretty quick way to, to get your uh, score up. Uh, maybe you uh, want to establish some credit uh, with um, your account, a credit account with your suppliers. Um, maybe you have a positive pay experience with um, some different vendors, but those vendors or suppliers don't report to credit bureaus. You can manually go in and add that, um, those trade lines. So that is something you might want to research. You want to dispute any errors or inquiries that are on there with the three different agencies and uh, make sure that you pay for delete. So with collections, so make sure you reach out to those uh, agencies to have removed any negative accounts from your report. So Chris, I think put in that consumer.ftc.gov. That's a, a good website. And, and again, speaking with the Consumer Credit Counseling Center, um, again, they have resources to help you repair and build your credit along with obtaining a free credit report, which again is the summary of your personal credit history. And you should know all of this, uh, know your number and the story behind the number um, before you meet with your lender. <clears throat> okay, uh, and then business credit scores. I won't go too much into this, um, but so you have your personal score, but then as you apply for credit in your business name and with your EIN versus your social security number, your business score is a blend of your FICO score, years in business, uh, and then the SBSS score, which is the Small Business Scoring Service. It combines your personal and your business financial habits, and you get a score. And the range is zero to 300. And like your personal score, it indicates to us the likelihood of being able to pay back a loan. Okay. So ways that you can improve your business score is to maintain your personal credit first and foremost, and then start applying for credit in your business name with an EIN. Um, some folks will start out with a small business credit card. Um, they'll go to, you know, Lowe's or Home Depot um, to, to start building. And the whole key there is to borrow, pay it back, borrow, pay it back. Don't even wait for the bill to come. Pay it before the bill comes, you know, just start building that credit. Okay. Any questions on that? Okay. No, it looks like you're good to move forward. It's either uncovering everything or they're sleeping out there. <laughs> okay. Uh, does using a, um, uh, a debit card help your credit? No, a debit card is linked to your checking account. Um, so it's, you know, coming out right away. <clears throat> um, you know, the bank that you're with, though, um, they might look at if you've ever had any overdrafts on your account or if you pay your loans with that institution that you bank with. Um, <clears throat> that could be considered, but it, it doesn't necessarily affect your score per se. 
<laughs> Elizabeth, I love it. Not sleeping, lots of good information. Yay. <laughs> um, so <clears throat> this is really important. Um, I know people talk about the five C's of credits, the six C's of credit, but this, my job is to paint the picture for my underwriter, paint the picture of your business, give them the story because they're never going to meet you probably. So I need to, you know, bring your business to life and any loan that I put on the books, I'm responsible for it. So I need to make sure that I support your loan hundred percent. When I before I submit the request, so I am going to have a, a conversation with you. You know, if any banker is just taking an application and not having a discussion with you, that's not really helping you. It could potentially hurt you. Um, so there, there's always a story. So you know, things like <clears throat> character. You know, I'll want to know your reputation in the industry, your integrity, your experience, your track record, uh, past payment histories, your experience. You know, I want to know you, your character, you know, who do you work with? Who, who are your suppliers and vendors? Now, again, if you're just starting out, I know that you might not have all of this stuff, but through this whole conversation, I can kind of get a gist of you and your business. So, and plus I work with a lot of the community partners you might work with, like the SBDC, um, in their, in, you know, Consumer Credit Counseling Center the Business Insights Center, Financial Empowerment. There, I mean, there's tons of organizations. We all work together. Um, the other thing is your credit. So again, your, your personal credit is so huge. So I'm going to look to talk to you about your credit history, <clears throat> both your business and your personal rating. And then capacity. You know, can you afford to make these loan payments? When I do my ability to pay and now look at your reports. Does it cash flow? Um, do you have good repayment history? What's your debt service coverage ratio? Um, is the is your company highly leveraged? It does have a lot of debt. Um, do you have unexpected or fluctuations in your cash? And then first and foremost, we always want the debt to be paid with cash from operations. You know, we don't want it coming out of your pocket per se, your personal. We want to see that you're paying your debts back from cash from operations. Yes, we, we do look at your personal income if you work outside of your business, and a lot of people do as they get started. But first and foremost, cash from operations is, is the primary source of repayment for any debt that's related to the business. Um, we look at cash flow, again, the debt service coverage ratio, the ability to pay with cash from operations, and then the reliability of the primary uh, repayment source. Yes, they can, Christine. I love that you guys do that. Mm. Um, all right. <clears throat> Collateral. So this is a big one. It can be cash, but it's usually commercial real estate equipment, inventory, maybe a percentage of your accounts receivable. <clears throat> and then the collateral is always a secondary source of repayment to liquidate or repay the loan along with personal guarantees. You know, we we never want to take buildings and equipment. Banks don't want that. <laughs> we want you just to be successful in your business and pay with cash from operations. But, you know, we do look at collateral um, as a secondary source and to strengthen the deal. Um, capital would be what they call skin in the game. Uh, so how much money have you personally invested in your business to date, you know, and that you might be at risk of losing if the, the business didn't do well? Um, you know, how much capital... Um, have you raised personal cash you put into the business? Do you have private investors or grants? And then we look at your personal financial statement for your the strength of you personally, assets that you own. <clears throat> Are you highly leveraged on the personal side with debt? So we look at all of that. And again, there is a story always behind the numbers. Um, you know, I just don't look at a piece of paper and say, oh, well, that's good or oh, that's bad. I We talk about it. Um, <clears throat> so... Those are all things that we should look at. Uh, I suggest that you keep receipts and have some type of paper trail of any money you've put in the business to date that might not be reflected in your books. Um, you know, the, if you maybe need to go for an SBA loan and you need to do the equity injection, we might be able to consider some of that stuff. So keep your receipts and anything that shows money that you've put into the business or assets you've bought and put into the business. Conditions. Um, that's another one. So <clears throat> that would be like intended purses, um, purposes of the loan. What will the loan proceeds be used for? Uh, working capital, uh, commercial real estate, financing equipment, 
And then we look at the industry and economic conditions. I mean, we are in crazy times, as you all know. Um, but we have, and so does the SBDC, we have um, vertical IQ that gives me trends for your industry. I look up your NICS or SIC code and uh, that number. And it also can be found on your tax returns. But <clears throat> I look that up and I, I look at your industry for bank products that they use for ratios and how you might compare against others in your industry. And I also provide that information to you so that you know what, you know, if you're not there, maybe these are some of your goals and you can get best practices. And, you know, that information for us usually changes uh, every six months. And I'm happy to send that out for free to people on their industry. It's, it's full of tons of great information. I use it. So definitely, you know, business owners, I think you would use it. Um, and then competency, <clears throat> that speaks to your experience, your financial literacy, your decision-making ability, your business acumen, um, you know, are, your ability to effectively manage and grow the business. So that's all the things that we talk about. I did that pretty fast, but there's always a, a why behind the what and a story behind the numbers. All right. So your team of professionals, um, you know, it's your personal board of directors. This is the group of people that are either going to help you or hurt you. I found in my many years in experience, uh, you know, 20 years at M&T and then prior to that, um, working with small and medium sized businesses. Um, th this is key. You, you need some good people behind you. Um, and shop for them like you would a doctor or anybody else. You're not going to mesh with everybody and they might not have a specialty in a certain area. So, you know, take a look at this. So when I talk about your accountant and your bookkeeper, um, your CPA, they help you with your tax preparation and financial planning and management. Maybe they do audits for your business, um, help you with business planning um, and decision support. So, yeah, bail. <laughs> um I had a business recently that I went to visit and uh, they had purchased the business from a previous, the previous owner. And, you know, we, we financed a good size loan. So I said, you know, bring out your balance sheet and your piano. Let's take a look at it. And um, long story short, it wasn't up to date. You know, the accountant was like, oh, we'll just update it at the end of the year. Well, that doesn't really help this business owner from May through December making business decisions. If he can't look at his income statement that's accurate or his balance sheet or his statement of cash flow, that's not going to help him make good decisions regarding his company. And if he needs a working line of credit or does he should he buy a piece of equipment at the end of the year to maybe have a write off? Is he going to owe a lot in taxes? How can he, you know, lessen that burden at the end of the year? You need to have reports up to date and current and accurate to make educated decisions for your business. OK, you shouldn't just be meeting with uh, your person every year at the end of the year with maybe your receipts saying, you know, OK, file my taxes. When you get started, sometimes that happens. But you really to, to get off to a good start, you need to find a good um, accountant, CPA, bookkeeper. Um, that's really important. And there's a ton of them out there. So I'll be happy to refer you to anybody if you're looking for one. But there's a ton out there. I suggest, you know, you shop around. Um, your attorney. So this person, they advise you on your legal structure and formation. Um, they help you execute contracts and agreements, uh, employment law and tax compliance, succession planning. So a lot of folks, they might use LegalZoom um, when they set up their entity. I not that that's wrong, but you really should speak with an attorney to make sure you're set up correctly for liability and tax purposes that, you know, really your accountant, and your attorney can work together. Um, but there's going to be times that you need to make sure you have a good attorney to review different contracts, <clears throat> maybe to help with collections of receivables. Um, but that's another strong person that you need to have behind you. And then, of course, your banker. Um, this person uh, is with you, hopefully, through the, the financial journey of your business. They provide solutions for your company by having uh, in-depth conversations to understand your business, where you're at in that moment, where you're looking to take the business, um, challenges that you're having, obstacles you need to overcome. That is the person that's going to help you navigate through all of that. 
Um, they give you access to capital and cash flow when you need it. Also help you with, um, we talked about how money comes into your business and how it leaves. They're the ones that help you efficiently be able to have products that can um, have money come in, protect it when it's there in your company. And then when it's time to pay people, how can you effectively and safely do that? So um, this is someone you should meet with several times a year. Hopefully they're proactive with you. Hopefully um, you have their name and their cell phone number that you can call versus calling a 1-800 number. But this is the person that is with you through your financial journey. Those three are so key. Oftentimes we all work together. Um, and again, looking for a banker is like shopping for anything else. You, you, when life happens, my goal as a banker is to have my customers, they're calling my cell phone or texting me saying, Melissa, can we talk? So those, you know, you need to have the name of somebody. You're, it, it's all about relationships with banks. Um, we like to have a relationship with our clients and be there for the long run. Well, let's um, have a question um, from William. So how much do CPAs generally charge for doing taxes for personal and business? And is it possible to do these through TurboTax? Yes, <clears throat> you can do them through TurboTax, but there's also, um, what is it? The cash group at the end of the year, I know they do business and personal taxes um, but you really should find a small business CPA. And depending on what your industry is, someone that specializes in that. And CPAs can charge flat rates or they can charge hourly rates. It really varies. And that's why I say shop around. Um, they'll tell you how much they charge. And then um, if they're going to be doing your bookkeeping too, or will they help you get set up on QuickBooks? to be able to do it. And Chris, this might be a good opportunity for you to mention the, the awesome service that's offered through the SBDC, sort of. Oh, you <laughs> the, mean the Attain Lab? Yeah. Yes. yes. So, so sure. So here at the SBDC, we're part of SUNY Brockport, as I stated, and we're at the REOC building downtown, right next to M&T um, headquarters, actually. And we have here the Attain Lab. And the Attain Lab has a QuickBooks certification program for free, where you can become certified on QuickBooks. And we also, if you are an SBDC client, we do have a discount for QuickBooks for you. Um, we also have other resources. I know the um, Empire Justice Center sits in the library. So um, on the fourth floor. There you go, Empire Justice. That was it. Yep, yep. So they are helpful. Um, and I do have names of other CPAs. I'm sure Melissa does too, if you yep. ever want to reach out. Yep. Thank you. That's awesome. See, again, there is so many resources out there. You just need to, and I'm happy to connect you with folks that I use for different things. Um, but there's so many resources out there free of charge too. A lot of financial education. Um, so your insurance provider is also a key person. You want to make sure you have the correct coverage for your business. But at the same time, it's a balance. You want to be over-insured necessarily or your insurance uh, poor. So, you know, again, shop for your insurance, put it out for bid, <clears throat> have it reviewed regularly just to make sure you're getting competitive rates. Um, that's important. So those are your, your bail or your, your four stools to the chair. There's so many ways to describe this group of people, your personal board of directors. Um, they'll tell you things that you maybe don't want to hear, but you need to hear, you know, giving you that honest and candid feedback. Um, and, and on that note, also other members would be your family, your business network, um, <clears throat> managers and staff. You want to make sure people are not, are giving you feedback that you can use. They always say feedback's a gift. You know, sometimes it's hard to receive that, but you know, it, if you have a business coach or mentor, you know, be looking for feedback. See what other people do in your industry. Share best practices. And one of the biggest thing that small businesses need to do and maybe nervous to do is network. You know, who likes to go in a room full of strangers? Personally, I do. But 
I mean, seriously, who likes to go in a room with strangers? You don't know anybody and you're going to network. So what does that look like? You know, so networking, though, is a skill and it's something that you all need to do no matter what business you're in. You're a doctor, a dentist, you know, whatever, because when you open business, open those doors, people just don't know you're there. They don't just flock in. Maybe they do. But for the most part, you network and you connect out there. If anybody needs a partner to go to a networking event, I'm happy to go with you. So you can reach out to me. But uh you'll you'll make connections and once you do a few of them you get pretty comfortable with it and there's a lot of different you know videos on networking and best practices and how you approach it um at the end of the day everybody's just people it's just getting to know people we're all kind of the same so same basic needs so just having conversations and getting to know people all right and then some resources so um, you know, on the MTB website, there is a ton of resources out there. Um, and we have uh, video libraries for uh, growing your business and for startup businesses and lots of information out there. We have some multicultural branches. I cover a lot of those because I primarily uh, work in the city with the Rochester downtown branch out of the first federal building, Waring Road and Top Supper Falls. I'm passionate, as Chris said, about helping women and minority owned businesses it's an area that I like to focus in, but I help all businesses, not for profits. Um, we don't really have territories. It's, you know, wherever, but th that, those are the areas I cover. And back to what I was saying, the multicultural branches. So we have Spanish speaking employees. Um, here's some codes if you wanted to look at any of those. And then... That's my contact information. That phone number is my personal cell, which is also my work number. Um, feel free to reach out anytime if you want to go over your specific situation um, or you just want to meet for coffee or lunch and uh, get to know more about your business and how we might be able to help or who I can connect you with that can help you. Chris, did I cover everything that you were looking for? And do we have any other questions? I'd be happy to answer you, them. No, you sure did at this time. There are no other questions. Oh, boy. That's either good or bad. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Oh, put Can the you code put page. the code page up again? Mm -hmm. Sure. Thank you, Sophia. Oh, you guys showing the love. I love it. Thank you. Because I, did, I didn't sleep a lot last night. Gosh, I probably a lot of people were up late. So I'm like, oops, I need lots of coffee this morning. Thank you. Love it. All right. Well, Chris, I don't have anything else. If you have anything for me. Love I love the don't candles. think so. I'm just reading this one real quick. Okay. Um, let me put my um, email. Unfortunately, my caps lock is stuck on. So, oh. hey, no. So I'm not yelling at you guys. Um, so if you have any questions, I see <laughs> that um, Dave Bassett has mentioned something here. Um, so Dave, if you want to reach out to me. Or um, shoot me an email. I can help you look up your case. Oh, wait. We have a question. Can sure. you explain how you have to balance the balance sheet? This is from William. Oh, yeah. Again, this, this book will be helpful if you can get this. But, you know, it's, it's a basic accounting practice. Um, let me go back to it. You know, your assets, this side of the equation needs to match your liabilities and owner's equity. It, it, it needs to balance. Um, assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. And it's just an accounting practice that debits and credits, you know, offsetting each other. It, that's a hard one for me to explain because it's really just accounting. General accounting practices gap. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just 
part of accounting. That would be a great one for your accountant actually sit, to sit down. And if I had your balance sheet, I could probably explain it better. Um, you know, um, the, the owner's equity section. So these are sources of cash that are not derived from your liabilities. So maybe money you've put into the business or capital you've put into the business. But these ones usually are the more self-explanatory ones that once you have your balance sheet and it's populated and the information's in there, you'll see that they balance because when, you know, it, it goes back to um, what we talked about sources and uses of cash. When you sell an asset, it cash, like there's always when one of these, like when accounts receivable is paid, when an accounts receivable is paid, it increases your cash and it decreases your AR. You know, it. I mean, anything that happens within your business, that journal entry, that bookkeeping entry has to offset. I don't know if I really answered that correctly, but it's it's really uh, just general accounting practices. I have a quick question. Yeah. Okay. So I've always learned that using credit on the personal side, not to pay your bill before it's reported to the credit bureau, would that be the same as for the business accounts you mentioned going to like Home Depot and then just paying the bill right away? It's not being reported to build the building, the credit for the business, is it? If you are paying it back, I mean, you might want to give it a little bit of time, not do it like the same day, but I pay it back a couple days before the bills do, like pay it before the due date. Okay. Because it, it'll be recorded. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> it'll also show on the statements too that you made multiple payments early. Um, will this presentation be shared? Yes, Melissa um, Kobo from the library. Um, it, it goes up onto um, YouTube. I just don't know the timing. Sophia, you heard me. Uh, normally there. within a week, it gets put on YouTube. Normally, I mean, normally in a couple days, but last time it took a little longer. So um, <laughs> normally by a week, it's on YouTube. But I send I send out the link when it's posted, so you'll know. It's, My friend um, Melissa there, she's a plethora of information too. <laughs> so mm -hmm. you definitely should connect with her. And we do have two copies of accounting for the number phobic. <laughs> if anybody wants to check it out. Yes, we have two copies. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I, I did the digital and then I, I just, I, I needed to buy it. And I can't tell if mine is so loved, my book, it's just, yeah, I love it. I have a bunch of recommendations, but that one for starters, I trust, trust me, it's not boring. It's kind of funny. <laughs> I don't see any more questions. Okay. okay. Well, in that case. Um, that is the end of our program. Um, I'd like to thank Melissa for speaking with today. It's been very confusing because it's been two Melissas here. Um, <laughs> but primarily, it's always it's Melissa Jordan that's being referenced. Um, a recording of this presentation will be posted on YouTube. Um, we'll email a link to all registered participants along with a copy of the presentation slides. And thank you all for coming. And hope to see you next month. Thank, Thank you. you everyone. Nice to see everyone. Bye-bye.